Four chefs are about to go wild in the aisles. Let's meet them. First up, Ghazwan Al Sharif is the in-house chef at a sorority house in Berkeley, California. I'm here to show what I can do. I want to prove that I can do it from souffles to whatever it is. <laughs> Next, Kirsten Helley is a private chef and mother of two from Seattle, Washington. I'm a personal chef and nutrition consultant. And then there's Daniela Malfitano, a private chef and culinary instructor from Oakland, California. To me, food is a God-given right, and I think that everyone should love it and know it. And finally, there's Luke Reyes, an executive chef from Los Angeles, California. I was nominated for one of the sexiest chefs in Los Angeles. <laughs> I might call Guy a sexy chef. Look at that hair, that's, that's a sexy chef. The first challenge, I want to start off with a big international dish. Awesome. International dish. This is my game. I, I know what I'm doing. I got this game. And we're going to go off in three, two, oh, wait a second. I got something I was supposed to tell you about this challenge. This is called Meals from the Middle, and that means that you're going to make your international dish only from the aisles in the middle of the store. You won't be using anything from the produce, the deli, the meat, the milk, the frozen, or the bakery. And we're taking off in three, two, one, go! Okay. I started to panic a little bit. It's hard to cook without any fresh ingredients, so I decide falafel. Come on, beans. Where are you, beans? I'm going to make a marinated bean panzanella. Panzanella is a bread salad. And I'm like, OK, well, if I'm stuck using canned things, at least I'm going to go for vegetables. So I'm planning on making a pasta arrabbiata with tuna. So I grabbed Italian tuna and jarred vegetables. The first thing popped in my head was shawarma. My yes. eyes was just pointing as pam. I guess because I've heard about it many times. So I knew I could go for a high quality jarred pasta sauce. I knew I could punch it up with the bright, briny vegetables. It's definitely more traditional to tear the bread when you're making a panzanella. And I get that in the bowl and I start heating up my pan to make this bagna cotta. It's crazy though what I'm doing, but I'm gonna try to do it. Shawarma is almost everywhere in Iraq. It's a street comfort. I'm making falafel with a side of Greek yogurt tzatziki, some warm olives, and some grilled pita. Five, four, three, two, one. Woo, stop working. Voila. First with Chef G. Please explain to the judges what you have for him. Judges, this dish is personal to me because I am born in Baghdad. Shawarma is everywhere. It's a part of my culture. It's a street food. Chef Kirsten. What do you have for the judges? I have for the judges of the spicy arrabbiata with a canned tuna. I got some jardinera for that bright, acidic component. All right, next up, Chef Daniela. What do you have for us? It's falafel. It's, it's a vegetarian, full protein, along with the Greek yogurt. I love it. A little pita grilled to give you something to scoop up the yogurt with. And last but definitely not least, Chef Luke. So judges, in front of you, you have a panzanella of beans with some uh, torn ciabatta bread toasted in bagna cotta. One person is checking out, and unfortunately, that one person will be Chef Daniela. So for this challenge, you're going to make the judges your best seafood dish. And here we go. Three, two, one. Oh, wait a second. One thing I forgot. Five ingredients or less. Oh, here goes Luke again. Bro, bro. Just cuts them off in the corner. So I'm going to make a crispy skin salmon with carrots, both roasted and pureed, and a carrot top salsa verde. I grab fish stock, blood orange, some of the spring onions, and carrots. I'm going to do a double seafood cake. Okay. So I grab claws and the shrimp, and I grab the eggs because I knew I need a binder. Cabbage, bell peppers, and green onions to make the slaw. All righty. I want to go with something simple, a shrimp satay. Come on, babies. I grab coconut milk, peanut butter, lemon, chili paste. All right. I realize I actually have six ingredients. The crab and the shrimp count as two. OK, it's gone. These are gone. I'm going to just stick with the shrimp. 
I feel pretty good about taking these limited ingredients and repurposing them. People don't really re realize that you can use all the parts of the carrot. Five, four, three, two, one, stop working! Woo! <laughs> that at least deserves a victory dance. Come on, give us a dance. Man. <laughs> First up, Chef Kirsten, what do you have for the judges? I have a beautiful bay shrimp cake over a, a fresh, crunchy slaw. Next up, Chef Luke, what do you have for us? So there's a salmon. I made crispy skinch with uh, carrot puree. So I roasted the carrots, and then I used the carrot tops to make a salsa verde. Chef G, what do the judges have? Judges, it's a, a shrimp satay. Now I garnish it with chives. The chef that will be leaving us will be Chef G. I am going to ask you to make your signature burger. And here we go. Three, two, one, go. Attention shoppers of Flavortown Market, I am so sorry. All ground meats are out of stock. Oh man, here we go. There's no ground beef. Jeez, okay. okay. So there are actual meat grinders available to them. God, what am I gonna make? I love Asian flavors, so I'm planning to make a banh mi style chicken burger. Immediately I start thinking about doing a decadent southern burger with pimento cheese and fried tomato. I wanna add so much flavor to this meat, so I chop up some ginger, some garlic, and a jalapeno, so there's just a little bit of kick to it. Throw it all into the food processor, and I mix that in with the ground chicken. Making a burger can be easy. You know, a lot of people don't treat burgers like actual meat, so I like to approach it like I would cook a steak. Let it sear, let it rest. The advantage of grinding your meat fresh is that it doesn't have to be cooked all the way through. You can serve it a nice rare to medium rare. Five, four, three, two, one, stop working. <sighs> Jeff Luke, why don't you break it down for us? What do we have? So I used a mixture of short rib and flank steak, seared it in a cast iron pan, give it a nice crust. On top of that is my take on pimento cheese. There's some uh, quick pickled red onions and then a sunny side egg. Next up, Chef Kirsten. I have a banh mi burger. I picked chicken thighs, all tons of fresh vegetables. The chef that will be checking out will be Chef Luke. I have a list of 10 items, and you have two minutes to find as many of these items as you can here in the store. Each item that you check off the list and put in your basket is worth $2,000. You get all 10 items, you'll win $20,000. In three, two, one, go! Okay, I'm gonna... And she's off! I take off from the start, and right away, I know the sour cream is right off to the side. Grab it, 2,000 in the cart right there, and I know that the ice cream cones are right behind me. All right. Okay. Ah, pudding mix right here. There okay. it is. Minute and four seconds. So I grab that, spun around the corner, and I know right around there is going to be the fish products. Smoked fish. Smoked rainbow trout. Smoked fish. Another 2,000. Winning the $20,000 would allow me to begin this community center and help teach the people in the underserved areas of my community how to cook healthy, fresh foods on a budget. I'm just thinking of all of the people I can help with this. The artichokes were here. Looking for artichokes. And thinking, I used it in challenge one. They were right here. I still could not find it. It was driving me crazy. Time's up. <sighs> but it was too late, but still, I'm happy with what I did. Winning $16,000. Oh Give it up for Kirsten.